We have several techniques for solving polynomial equations that are quadratic, meaning their highest power is x squared. And one of the most useful is the quadratic formula. Here's the idea. If we want to solve a quadratic equation, one that can be written in this form, where these numbers a, b, and c are going to be some given coefficients, then the solutions are given by this formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So in order to use this formula all you have to do is figure out what the values of a, b, and c are necessary to plug in to this formula. But you should bear in mind that this is really two formulas. This plus or minus here is just a shorthand because most quadratic equations have two solutions and it turns out we get one of the solutions by using the plus sign and the other solution by using the minus sign. So there are really two solutions coming out of this equation and we can represent both of them in a shorthand by using this plus or minus symbol. But a lot of times we're going to actually want to explicitly write out what the two separate solutions are as we'll see in a moment. So let's take a look at an example of a problem we can solve using this formula. In this question, we're asked to find the zeros or solutions or roots of this quadratic equation. And those three terms all mean the same thing. So you could just be asked to find the solutions or just asked to find the zeros or just asked to find the roots. Those are different ways of asking the same question. Basically, we just want to solve this equation. Well, this is of the form we were just looking at, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And we can see from the formula here that we want to use the coefficients a equal to 2, b equal to negative 2, and c equal to negative 12. So if I do that in the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. I'm going to replace my b's with negative 2. So wherever I have a b I'm going to replace it with parentheses and inside those parentheses I'll put negative 2. Same thing inside the square root there's a b squared so that b is going to be replaced with parentheses and inside the parentheses I'll put negative 2 minus 4 times a, I'm going to replace a with parentheses and inside the parentheses I put a 2, c, replace c with parentheses and inside the parentheses put negative 12, all divided by 2a, so again I've got an a to replace with a 2. Okay, so if I simplify this, negative negative 2 is positive 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 quantity squared is 4 minus 4 times 4 times negative 12 well I'm gonna be subtracting this quantity subtracting a negative quantity so that really becomes plus and then 4 times 2 is 8 8 times 12 is 96 and 2 times 2 in the denominator becomes 4 so this is 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 96 is 100 the square root of 100 is 10 so I've simplified this down to 2 plus or minus 10 all divided by 4. But remember that's two solutions. One of them is when you use the plus sign. So 2 plus 10 divided by 4. And you can simplify that because 2 plus 10 is 12 divided by 4 gives you 3. Or the other solution is when you use the minus sign. Now 2 minus 10 is negative 8 and if I divide that by 4 I get negative 2. So there are two solutions for this equation. 
x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Let's take a look at another one. This is written a little bit differently. Notice that it's not in the same form as the formula we wanted to use. The formula requires us to be working with ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And our equation is not quite in that shape, but we can fix that by just moving everything to one side. So I can rewrite the equation as 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And after doing that, I can see what I want to use for coefficients. I want a to be 4, b to be 4, and c to be 1. So if you don't take the step of moving everything to one side, you might accidentally make the mistake of letting c be negative 1. And that's not what we want. That will not lead us to the right answer. Okay, so now let's plug things into our quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And I think it's a good idea to write that out every time you use it because that'll help you to remember it. Do the same thing as I did before. Everywhere I see a variable a, b, or c, I'm going to replace it with parentheses and then the value I'm plugging in. So b's get replaced by 4. a's get replaced by 4 and c's get replaced by 1. Then I have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared which is 16 minus 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 is 16 over 2 times 4 which is 8 and then if I simplify the square root well look at this I have a 16 minus 16 which is just 0 and the square root of 0 is 0 well these two solutions I'm getting are actually the same thing now right because if I use the solution with the plus sign I have negative 4 plus 0 if I use the solution with the minus sign, I have negative 4 minus 0, and both of those give me the same thing. So either way, I'm really only getting one solution out of this equation, not two. And we'll see why in a few slides. But in this case, everything simplifies to negative 4 over 8, which can further be simplified to negative 1 over 2. Next, let's find the solutions of x squared plus 8x plus 25 equals 0. So I can start this the same way, and everything's written nicely now, so I can immediately see what I want my coefficients are. It doesn't look like there's a coefficient in front of the x squared, but you just have to remember that there's a hidden 1 there. So a is 1, b is 8, and c is 25. So if I use that in the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Then replace the b with 8. Replace the a with 1 and the c with 25. Now inside the square root, 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 is 4, times 25 is 100. And in the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. And then if we keep going and simplify what's inside the square root, 64 minus 100 is negative 36. Now, at this point, you could look at that and think something's wrong because you're trying to take the square root of a negative number. And a lot of times we can't do that, but sometimes we can. Sometimes we're allowing ourselves to use complex numbers for solutions. There are no real numbers that you can square to get negative 36, but there are what are called complex numbers that will work. So if we allow ourselves to use complex numbers, 
we can finish solving this. Here's what we do. Think of the square root of negative 36 as the square root of 36 times a negative 1. And then take the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 36 we can do, that's 6. And then the square root of negative 1 is one of these complex numbers, and it's usually abbreviated by the symbol i. So what do we get here? We get one solution from the plus sign here, negative 8 plus 6i divided by 2. And another solution from using the minus sign, negative 8 minus 6i divided by 2. Now you cannot combine the negative 8 and the 6 here because they're not like terms. The 6 is a coefficient of i while the negative 8 is not. So you cannot combine those. On the other hand, you can simplify these fractions a little bit more because everything's divided by 2 so I can divide both of these values by 2. I can divide the negative 8 by 2 and get negative 4 and I can divide the 6i by 2 to get 3i. And so my two solutions end up being x equals negative 4 plus 3i and x equals negative 4 minus 3i. All right, let's take a look at why we had uh, differing numbers of solutions. How many solutions are we going to have for a quadratic equation? Well, in order to answer that, let's look at graphs of some different equations corresponding to different choices of coefficients a, b, and c. And I'm going to actually make this into a function of two, uh, a function y of x here so that I can graph on an xy plane. We know when we graph a quadratic we get a parabola and the placement of the parabola depends on the values that we use for these numbers for these coefficients a b and c. The first picture we see here is a parabola corresponding to values of a b and c where the b squared minus 4ac the part inside the square root ends up being zero. And if you go back a few slides, you can see when we had a situation like that, we ended up with square root of zero. And so there was only one solution to that equation, and it was a real number. And another problem where instead of having b squared minus 4ac be zero, we had it be positive. Now we end up with two solutions. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, that's when you're trying to take the square root of a negative number. And there are no real number solutions for that kind of equation, but there are two complex solutions for that kind of equation. And if you look at the pictures of these, you can see what's going on. In this parabola where there was only one solution, that's because there's only one point where the parabola touches the horizontal axis. There are two solutions on this one when the parabola passes through the horizontal axis in two places. For the final graph, that parabola doesn't pass through the horizontal axis at all, which is why there are no real number solutions. But even when there are no real number solutions, there are still going to be complex number solutions.